Hello and uh, welcome back. I'm uh, here doing another episode of uh, John Talks Wrestling and yeah, I'm going to be uh, talking about the uh, Money in the Bank pay-per-view from this past Sunday. Actually, just going to do like a rundown and review my thoughts and feelings on the results and stuff. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get on with this. Uh, the first match-up was um, the Shield versus the Usos, which was a pretty good match. I mean, even at one point, I thought the Usos were going literally going to win the match. It got to that point where you thought, "Fuck, these they are actually going to win this." Um, do still agree this match up would have been better on the actual main card, uh, but as I said in my preview, the Shield still won it anyway, and uh, uh, they pretty much got it by a whisker. You know, it was at the point where like. You know, they want it by the skin of their teeth. Um, I think a lot of people do underestimate the Usos, and I could be wrong about that. It's just my personal opinion. Um, they probably will end up winning tag team titles at some point. You know, being there in relation to the Rock and the Samoan family. I don't know the actual name of the family, but you know. But overall, not a bad match up for a pre-show. That's, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool matchup. On the edge of your seat kind of thing. So now we uh, jump to the first matchup of the actual official card. Official, what I put two fingers up for? Uh, official card. So this matchup was the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank matchup. Uh, it was featuring Fandango, Dean Ambrose. Damian Sando, Rodi Coase, Jack Swagger, and Antonio Cesaro. Two tag teams in this one, obviously Cody Rose and Damian Sando, Team Rose Scholars, uh, Jack Swagger and Antonio Cesaro, whatever they're called. I can't remember what the name of the team, team was called now. I've gone. So yeah, I was uh, wrong about this one completely for my earlier video, my um, preview video. I said that basically I was thinking like probably uh, uh, Jack Swagger was going to win, that was who I wanted to win and who I thought was probably going to win it, bearing in mind he's the one that probably deserves it more, I'm putting myself in there a bit, saying that, the winner was uh, Sandow, and he done it by, hold on a minute, I've actually forgotten to mention that actually Wade Barrett was in this matchup, I can, for some reason in my notes I've forgotten to write Wade Barrett's name and I completely forgot about that, oh well, fail. Um, yeah, Wade Barrett and Swagger were the two that I said in the previous video that I thought was going to win. Neither of them won. Probably would have preferred one of them to win it. You know, Sandow hasn't been there that long. Wade Barrett and uh, Swagger have been there a while. He would have thought they would have started putting them in the picture a bit more. Maybe the reserving them for maybe a, something else, I don't know, for later on. I don't know. Um, um, match up, you know, Sandow won. Uh, Probably gives him a bit, bit of a bigger push to be, you know, pushing him a bit more. Um, in my notes, I wrote, yeah, basically he pretty much pushed uh, Cody Rose at the last second off the ladder. I mean, Cody Rose literally had his hand on the briefcase pretty much, and Sandel just pushed him off the ladder, and that effectively ended the end. Well, put the end, the end to Rose Scholars. Uh, you know, um, it's probably going to set out some sort of Damien Sandow Cody Rhodes rivalry. Maybe, hopefully, Cody Rhodes will get rid of that stupid moustache that makes him look absolutely ridiculous. Hopefully, they, yeah, that's how like I said. Hopefully, they'll do some, some decent rivalry from that. But, you know, a bit of a short lived tag team. <laughs> but there we go. So, yeah, that wasn't. That wasn't a bad result, I suppose, at the end of it. It wasn't what I wanted, but, you know, you can't, can't win them all. Next matchup was uh, Curtis Axel versus The Miz for the IC title. This is a, The Miz. Um, now, this is pretty much a matchup I didn't like the result to. Now, I'm going to probably go into a right big rant about this now. But I personally think The Miz should have won this match. Um... He, um, but he didn't, basically, and it just seems to me that 
the uh, Curtis Axel thing. It's you know, yeah, he was Kurt Hanging, he's Kurt Hanging's son, but it doesn't matter. Why should he be given special privileges? It seems to me like WWE are just putting in special privileges here. You got a guy like the Miz who's worked really hard over the last few years. I know he's been WWE champion, but you know they seem to be not using Miz in my eyes correctly. I mean, they might in the future use him a bit more. And I hope they do, but it just, you know, and that's you know, no disrespect to Kurt Henning. You know, Kurt Henning was an amazing wrestler. And it just seems to me that WWE have been a little bit biased to the balls the fact that Kurt Zanks always is, you know, was Kurt Henning's son. And but also on the on the flip side, I suppose, maybe it's a, maybe a night, maybe it's a call in to, uh, for Miz to stop, um, going for IC title, maybe WWE should consider taking off the IC title thing and say, look, you know, we're going to give you a bet better push towards the WWE or the World Heavyweight Championship. But, um, I mean, it just seems to me that WWE are using The Miz to put other wrestlers over, I mean, he's the one that should be getting, be getting put over or be getting a bigger push, you know. So... Why not? What WWE? Why don't you just take Miz away from the IC Championship picture and uh, put him in the WWE in the World Heavyweight Championship picture? My opinion. All right, next match up. Moving on is AJ Lee defending her title against Caitlyn, and she actually defeated Caitlyn, but that's for the Divas Championship. Now, this is a storyline that I've been really enjoying as of late. It's been it's been rather comical, but rather ruthless at times. And for a, for a change, it was a it was a divas matchup that actually delivered uh, something you actually wanted to watch. I was actually quite glued to the match pretty much the whole time. And usually with divas matches, I get a bit fed up with them because they're a bit like half assed. Um, basically, a lot of it was to do with the fact that Caitlyn kept close like well every time she was hitting AJ or like. Clothesline and AJ was doing pretty much free, you know, flip somersaults pretty much in the air and landed on her face, which was quite quite amusing. Um, also, what I liked about the matchup was that if you watched, I think it was like the previous SmackDown or Raw, I think I can't remember which one it was. There was a a, a bit in the in one of the matches, I think it was where Caitlyn actually slapped out a bigger length. I think it was a SmackDown before where they had like a sign in or something, and uh, Caitlyn basically like slapped Langston they actually touched on that in this matchup. Like there was like a, a, a bit where like AJ uh, not AJ, Caitlin stared at Langston, he just like kinda of backed off and was like, no, okay, I'm not I'm not I'm not going there again. But um you know in the end AJ AJ prevailed with the with a with the Black Widow of a submission move which Caitlin tapped out. You know, it's obviously the building to something a bit uh I don't know if they're building to anything, I don't know. Maybe they are. Um, so yeah, that was that match. That was a decent Divas matchup for a change. Next matchup is Ryback. He defeated Chris Jericho. Sorry for the people that are going to get spoilers, but you know, Money in the Bank's been on, so you should have seen it. Not my problem. Um, now, now, I'm not a big fan of Ryback. You know, I liked the guy when he first came in to WWE. Not a major big fan of him now, and I certainly don't like him as a heel. I think he's rather annoying. Um, and what is with these fucking Goldberg chants? Christ, he's not Goldberg. He's Ryback. I don't know where these Goldberg chants are coming from in the crowds. It's getting on my nerves. So basically, I said in the previous video, I, want, I wanted Jericho to win. You know, I'm a big Jericho fan. You know. Um, I know that the, the, the uh, thing with Jericho is, is he's more these days putting guys over, you know, and pushing up younger guys that are coming through the ranks, obviously, because he's doing, you know, like Fozzie and stuff like that, and he's going to be he keeps disappearing and reappearing and all that kind of thing. But you know, it would be nice to see maybe Jericho actually win. You know, I mean, I know he does win matches, but like, it'd be nice to see him do a bit more than just come back. Help a couple of guys, push a couple of guys, and then you know, piss off again, do Fozzy. You know, be nice if you come back, head like a title run, win away for a bit, 
come back, maybe it's never tight run, they come back again, you know, you kind of get what I mean there anyway. Maybe you could put, I don't know if you would agree with it, but you know, maybe put his band on the hold for a bit. No, he's fully a good band, it's, you know, it's his choice. It'd just be nice to see Jericho do a bit more than just help push younger guys. It'd be nice to see him have maybe, you know, one final world title run or a couple more title runs before he's gets near near the, the end of retirement, as I, as they say, or as you say, whatever. So yeah, that's that match. So this match, the next match is uh, Del Rio. Well, he beat Dolph Ziggler in the World Title. This was a really, really good matchup. I really enjoyed this matchup. Um, I was pretty much a Ziggler all the way on this one. Um, I'm not a fan of Del Rio. Um, not for any particular reason. I'm just not a fan of him. I can, I'm not a fan of Ryback. So, you know, he's a good wrestler. It's just why he's in WWE. But you know, he just isn't my cup of tea, really. It's why it is. It's nothing against him personally or anything like that. Just people know. Um, I was pretty much glued to this match much of the time, uh, but then the you know not story. No, you know you. I'm looking at this not story. At some point, then AJ comes down. Yeah. Ziggler tells her to leave. She doesn't. And then, uh, for some reason, she decides to get in the ring and just blatantly hit Del Rio with a world with the world title match. I mean, this is a match that is really, really good, and I can't understand why she done this. I know I'm talking like I don't know. It's obviously the it's storyline, but you know, I don't. No, I didn't. Just belts digging into me. Um, yeah, for some reason, she just hit him, hit him, hit Del Rio with the world title. Or with, not with the world title, so with her Divas title as well. I thought she picked, for some reason I thought she picked up the world title. Cost Ziggler in the match. Brilliant. Brilliant. I thought, I thought Ziggler was actually going to actually going to um, win the world title, but maybe not. Uh, why, or oh why did she do that? I don't know. You know, if you're going to try and do that, try and do it about the ref seeing you. Crying out loud. Stupid idiot. You know, and I'm, I'm a fan of AJ and I'm calling her a stupid idiot. Anyway, I didn't please Ziggler. Um, basically, at the end of the matchup, he uh, leaves in the ring on her own. She's like, "Oh, love you, love you." Yeah, okay. Um, maybe they're trying to set up a thing where I have this really weird theory on this though that she seems to be spending a lot of time around Biggie Langston, and maybe the maybe it's me being a bit crazy. And you can comment on this in the box below, you YouTubers. Um, if you can see them, maybe there's like some really weird, like they're trying to build towards some storyline where like AJ's like, it turns out she's had an affair with like Bicky Langston. How weird would that be? That's a weird concept, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so that's that match up, you know. But think about that one, guys. Put it in the box below. Right. In my notes, sorry. Uh, next match up. It's John Cena. No. Yeah, John Cena defeats Mark Henry. What the fuck? Getting a bit fed up with John Cena. Not his ring in ring skills, it's the fact that he keeps winning ridiculously impossible matches like Mark Henry, who weighs 400 pounds and he weighs 200 pounds less, and he can pick Mark Henry up and give him a match adjustment. Anyway, so uh, this has been bothering me for a while, right? Mark Henry is like 42, I believe. I think I looked into this. Not what Michael Cole said at the beginning of the matchup. Oh, he's 50. You fucked up, Michael Cole. Sorry, mate. Anyway, Mark Henry, 42. Uh, he's had the title once, which was the world title. He had that, I think it was like 2006, something like that, 2007. He's getting to the point now in his career where he needs to have one last possible final run. I think he's probably closing on thinking of retiring. I don't know, I've heard rumours about it, I don't know if there's any truth in it. Um it would be nice if WWE could like actually give him like one final decent run. Um they don't seem to be doing that for some reason. I don't know why. 
you know, if not now, if he's not thinking of like retiring now, you know, fair enough, you know, next couple of years maybe give him like one final run, you know, it'd be good to see him have a WWE title or even the world title again, doesn't matter, it's a world, it's a world championship, it'd be good to see Mark Henry with that title. Um, I mean, this guy in my mind has done a lot for WWE, he's in the last over 10 years, I mean, I mean, when he signed that contract, uh, what year is he? he signed a contract after he left the Olympics? He signed like a 10 year contract with WWE, which expired in 2006, I think it's 1996. Expired in 2006. And obviously he redoed it. But like, he's done so much. I mean, for he you know, for heaven's sake, like, when he came to the ring, people were cheering for Mark Henry. I know he just did. Because, like, WWE are getting a bit fed up with John Cena, I think, the universe are anyway. I mean, anyway, this map. Anyway, no, enough of my running. And it, and it, this matchup was okay, um, rather climatic, because there was, um, especially when John Cena hit the attitude adjustments. I thought, this is it. Uh, Mark Henry's defeated. He kicked out. I was like, yes. You know, I was really rooting for Mark Henry in this matchup. Uh, he still had a little bit longer until uh, John Cena decided he was going to lock the STF submission in, and uh, I believe he tapped out. No, actually, no, Mark Henry got out of it first. He, he did have it eventually, but Mark Henry actually escaped, like, first, and then it was locked in again. There was a point where Mark Henry actually did grab the ropes a second time, but then John Cena got off him, pulled it back in the ring, and hit the set STF on again. And uh, that was it for Henry. And I really hope that WWE do give him, you know, some kind of world title run in the future. It'd be nice to see that. But that, that remains to be seen on WWE's part. You know, I should do a video on ranting about wrestlers that don't get decent title shots or get decent pushes. Mm, don't get used properly. That should be a good video for me to do. Right, on to the final matchup. The Money in the Bank uh, ladder match. The WWE Championship briefcase. It's the one. Uh, right, this matchup, which was dubbed the, uh, it's an All Stars one. Uh, featured uh, Randy Orton, Daniel Ryan, CM Punk, Christian Sheamus, and of course the return RVD. Now it was meant to feature Kane, but the White family, who debuted on the Raw before, decided to take out Kane. I haven't actually seen that yet. I don't think I'm going to be able to see it. I think I missed that one, but I do know what happened. So I do tend to find these things out before I see them anyway. Uh, it's a shame that Kane wasn't in the matchup. It's, I don't know why WWE keep persisting to take him out of matches like that, you know. But I'll go into that in, in another video. I don't want to go into the, you know, the fact that the WWE don't use Kane that well. Anyway, um, it would have been interesting though, because obviously Kane and RVD used to be tag team partners. To so see them in the ring again would have kind of sparked, sparked something. It might have sparked a bit of jealousy with Daniel Bryan, which would have been quite an interesting little angle. But it didn't happen. Anyway, first at the beginning, basically everyone gunned for RVD, take him out. He's a new guy. He's back. You know we know what he wants. He's been hyped. Let's take him out. So they got got rid of RVD for a, for a bit. I don't know how long. I can't remember. And then the next threat was Sheamus. Took him out because he's obviously the next. He's the biggest guy, not the fastest guy. RVD was probably the one of the fastest guys, but other than Daniel Bryan. So took out Sheamus. Next, he's like tall, quite tall guy. Oh, and it was left to the other four to uh, continue the battle. And uh, it was pretty much after all the, uh, well, it was like ladders in the face, all over the ladders everywhere, fucking smacking each other in every part of their body with ladders. Absolute craziness. Really good match. Really enjoyed that one. That was probably one of the highlights of the event, in my eyes anyway. Especially since Seamus decided to like fall for a ladder and smash it into two pieces, or you know, break it into two pieces, which was quite good. Uh, I did say, he f yeah, I did say he fell for a ladder and smacked it into two pieces, making sure I didn't say table by accident because I've done that in the past. Oh yeah, and Daniel Bryan's rage outburst was quite funny as well. He went a bit mental and was like attacking everyone. That was quite good. He just like went on a complete roll. And we like literally just attacking everybody. And then it got to um, 
pretty much near the end of the match up we got CM Punk's turn to try and go for the uh, for the championship belt or belt briefcase see I keep making mistakes briefcase championship briefcase or briefcase to get the money in the bank briefcase I know what I mean you, you guys know what I mean I keep making mistakes it happens he was it was now CM Punk's turn to go for the uh, money in the bank briefcase for the WWE Championship. Now, at this point, I was half expecting Brock Lesnar to come out. Um, to basically screw CM Punk out the championship. But I was wrong. It all started. Curtis Axel comes down. And uh, basically, Punk wastes no time. He knows what Curtis Axel's trying to do. Hits him with the GTS. Outside the ring, we enter the ring, and then Paul Heyman turns up. And basically, in true Paul Heyman storyline fashion, pretends that he's furious with Curtis Axel. Says, "Oh, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing for interfering and stuff like that?" That wrong again. As CM Punk tries to climb a ladder, uh, Paul Heyman or basically grabs another ladder from behind him, uh, smacks CM Punk about like, five or six times with a ladder in the head or something like that, and basically splits Sam Punk open. Shouts a load of smack to him, basically. I can't remember what he even said. Um, pretty much puts an end to uh, <laughs> uh, Sam Punk's chances of any uh, money in the bank victory. Thank you, Paul. But, you know, I was kind of gunning for RVD to win this one. I've just ruined that now, haven't I? But he doesn't win, everyone knows that anyway. So, any place sets up a win for um, Randy Orton to uh, win the money in the bank. Now, fair enough, Randy Orton won it, but is it me or was Randy Orton had the title too many times? He's getting a bit like Triple H was a few years ago when he kept winning the title over and over and over and you get a bit bored of it. Now, I thought the whole point of the RVD hype was for him to actually like, come back and actually win the money in the bank. But, you know, so... I mean, you know, fair enough, Randy Orton won it, but it would have been nice to see RVD win it, or maybe CM Punk or Daniel Bryan, you know. I didn't want Sheamus to win it, Sheamus has had the title too much. So yeah, that was pretty much the money in the bank pay-per-view. Um, for a change, it was actually a really good, really good show. Um, probably give it like 8, 8.5 out of 10. I was a bit annoyed about some of the match, some of the ways WWE did with some of the angles they were doing and stuff. Some of the match I didn't feel were the right decisions and stuff like that. You know, that's why it's dropped a bit. You know, you can't, but I'm doing just that's my expectations, not what WWE thinks right. I mean, the main reason I'm annoyed about it is the whole John Cena Mark Henry thing that's rather annoying. And the reason why I knocked it down again was again the RVD hype. What was the point of putting RVD hype there when you're not actually gonna make him win the champ, you know, make him win the um. Money in the Bank briefcase, what is the point of hyping that? But yeah, so that's my viewing at 8, 8, and a half out of 10. I'll give that event, considering the fact that I didn't have to pay extra, like I normally have to pay for like £14 to view it. I didn't have to this time, it was um, on Sky Sports free for free in a way. Well, not really, because I pay a bill for my satellite, but anyway. Nothing about that. So yeah, um, that's the uh, Money in the Bank review by me, John. Uh, that is it for this edition of John Talks Wrestling. I've done my talking for today on that on that subject. I will see you guys in the next edition of John Talks Wrestling. Have a good evening and ta-ta for now.